In the near future, both Elon Musk and NASA wants to land humans on Mars. But reaching the red planet, on average around 140 million miles away, will be a mammoth feat. Colder than Antarctica and with little to no oxygen, Mars is a hostile environment. The longer it takes astronauts to get there and the longer they stay, the more they are at risk. Don't forget to watch today's video to the very end to find how Elon Musk has revealed the new nuclear starship and how it will affect space travel. As NASA's Perseverance rover homes in on the red planet, engineers on the ground are furthering potential propulsion technologies for the first human missions to Mars. NASA is looking at two types of nuclear propulsion systems, nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion. Nuclear electric propulsion systems use propellants much more efficiently than chemical rockets but provide a low amount of thrust. They use a reactor to generate electricity that positively charges gas propellants like xenon or krypton, pushing the ions out through a thruster, which drives the spacecraft forward. Using low thrust efficiently, nuclear electric propulsion systems accelerate spacecraft for extended periods and can propel a Mars mission for a fraction of the propellant of high thrust systems. Nuclear thermal propulsion technology provides high thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets. The system works by transferring heat from the reactor to a liquid propellant. That heat converts the liquid into a gas, which expands through a nozzle to provide thrust and propel a spacecraft. NASA, in coordination with the Department of Energy DOE, and also Elon Musk, is asking industry for preliminary reactor design concepts for a nuclear thermal propulsion system. The agencies plan to fund several efforts to explore different approaches. Future follow-on contracts will generate more detailed reactor designs and build preliminary testing hardware. While NASA's immediate priority is returning humans to the moon with the Artemis program, we're also investing in tall pole technologies that could enable crewed missions to Mars, said Jim Reuter, Associate Administrator of NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, STMD. We look forward to seeing what innovations industry offer in nuclear propulsion as well as fission surface power via a forthcoming request for proposals for that technology. Human missions to Mars, to date. Only robotic explorers have traveled to Mars without the need for returning to Earth. Waiting for optimal planetary alignment for the return trip would require astronauts to loiter at Mars for more than a year, stretching the round-trip mission to more than three years. NASA's goal is to minimize the time the crew travels between Earth and Mars to as close to two years as is practical. Space nuclear propulsion systems could enable shorter total mission times and provide enhanced flexibility and efficiency for mission designers. To keep the round-trip crewed mission duration to about two years, at a minimum, NASA is looking at nuclear-enabled transportation systems to facilitate shorter-stay surface missions. The systems would take advantage of optimal planetary alignment for a low-energy transit for one leg of the trip and the new technologies enhance performance to make the higher-energy transit for the other leg. It's too soon to say what propulsion system will take the first astronauts to Mars, as there remains significant development required for each approach. Technology Readiness NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama leads the agency's Space Nuclear Propulsion Project in partnership with a DOE team that includes scientists and engineers from Idaho National Laboratory, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and Oak Ridge National Laboratory. STMD's Technology Demonstration Missions Program funds the technology development. Nuclear electric propulsion builds on NASA's work maturing solar electric propulsion thrusters and systems for Artemis, as well as the development of fission power for the lunar surface. Significant investment has also been made in relevant fuel and reactor technologies for small terrestrial reactors that could be adapted to space reactors to power electric propulsion. The U.S. government's aim to establish a fuel fabrication capability has a range of applications, including nuclear propulsion and fission surface power. Nuclear thermal propulsion has been on NASA's radar for more than 60 years. The new hardware design and development phase pursued through a request for proposals released Feb 12, 2021, builds on existing efforts to mature crucial elements of a nuclear thermal propulsion system. NASA, in partnership with DOE, is developing and testing new fuels that use low-enriched uranium for space applications to see how they perform under the extreme thermal and radiation environments needed for nuclear thermal propulsion. NASA is working closely with DOE, industry, and universities to put fuel samples and research reactors at Idaho National Laboratory's Transient Reactor Test treat, facility and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Nuclear Reactor Laboratory for Nuclear Testing. 
The team is also performing non-nuclear testing in simulated reactors at Marshall test facilities. The reactor underpinning a nuclear thermal propulsion system is a significant technical challenge due to the very high operating temperatures needed to meet the propulsion performance goals, explained Anthony Calameno, NASA's nuclear technology portfolio lead within SDMD. While most of the engine operates at modest temperatures, materials in direct contact with the reactor fuel must be able to survive temperatures above 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. NASA and DOE have been working with industry on a viable approach, and industry will now develop preliminary designs to meet this challenge. Technology and Fusion We're exploring both nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion options for crewed Mars missions, Calameno said. Each technology has its unique advantages and challenges that need to be carefully considered when determining the final preference. Whichever propulsion system is ultimately chosen, the fundamentals of nuclear propulsion can enable robust and efficient exploration beyond the moon. NASA will continue to develop, test, and mature various propulsion technologies to reduce risk and inform the Mars transport architecture. Here are six things you should know about nuclear thermal propulsion. Number one. NTP systems are powered by fission. NTP systems work by pumping a liquid propellant, most likely hydrogen, through a reactor core. Uranium atoms split apart inside the core and release heat through fission. This physical process heats up the propellant and converts it to a gas, which is expanded through a nozzle to produce thrust. Number 2. NTP systems are more efficient than chemical rockets. NTP rockets are more energy-dense than chemical rockets and twice as efficient. Engineers measure this performance as specific impulse, which is the amount of thrust you can get from a specific amount of propellant. The specific impulse of a chemical rocket that combusts liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen is 450 seconds, exactly half the propellant efficiency of the initial target for nuclear power rockets, 900 seconds. This is because lighter gases are easier to accelerate. When chemical rockets are burned, they produce water vapor, a much heavier byproduct, than the hydrogen that is used in an NTP system. This leads to greater efficiency and allows the rocket to travel farther on less fuel. Number 3. NTP systems won't be used at launch. NTP systems won't be used on Earth. Instead, they'll be launched into space by chemical rockets before they are turned on. NTP systems are not designed to produce the amount of thrust needed to leave the Earth's surface. Number 4. NTP systems will provide greater flexibility. NTP systems offer greater flexibility for deep space missions. They can reduce travel times to Mars by up to 25% and, more importantly, limit a flight crew's exposure to cosmic radiation. They can also enable broader launch windows that are not dependent on orbital alignments and allow astronauts to abort missions and return to Earth if necessary. Number 5. NTP systems were developed with support from DOE. NTP is not new. It was studied by NASA and the Atomic Energy Commission. Now the U.S. Department of Energy, during the 1960s, as part of the Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application Program. During this time, Los Alamos National Laboratory scientists helped successfully build and test a number of nuclear rockets that current NTP designs are based off of today. Although the program ended in 1972, research continued to improve the basic design, materials and fuels used for NTP systems. NASA and DOE are now working with industry to develop updated nuclear thermal propulsion reactor designs. Three industry teams won a design competition in 2021 and are now further developing designs that will be submitted for evaluation for the fall of 2022. Number 6. NTP systems are focused on using low-enriched uranium. DOE is working with NASA to help test develop and assess the feasibility of using new fuels that require less uranium enrichment for NTP systems. This fuel may be made using new advanced manufacturing techniques and can potentially help reduce security-related costs that come with using highly enriched fuel. Idaho National Laboratory is currently helping NASA develop and test fuel composites at its transient reactor test treat facility to examine how they perform under the harsh temperatures needed for nuclear thermal propulsion. Initial testing has shown that nuclear fuels under development by NASA and DOE are capable of withstanding ramps up to operational nuclear thermal propulsion temperatures without experiencing significant damage. With that, we come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lastly, join in a next time 
for more of such interesting content.